everyone. I've got something cool to show you today and this video is more of a discussion video than anything else. So to get straight into it, the one of the biggest complaints that Game Maker has is that there's no native multi-threading support. And whilst I personally don't really need this in my own project, it's something that can improve the quality of life of basically any project, whether it be offloading heavy tasks onto different cores so they don't disrupt the main thread, just having it so that the main thread doesn't block if you want to do something, uh, such as level generation, you want to display a progress bar, there's all sorts of things that um, multi-threading comes in handy for. And currently the only real way to do multi-threading is to, well there are two main ways, you can either create a DLL and just spawn off threads inside the DLL, however that limits you to writing scripts and code that you want to run on a different thread in C++ or whatever language you're writing the DLL in. This is okay but it's not ideal because the whole benefit of using a game engine is that you get to benefit from the simple scripting language. If you've got a project with lots of integrated data structures and functions that are at your disposal, you don't want to have to be re-implementing all of those in the C++ end. There used to be a library called GMAPI that got around this, but since Game Maker Studio this has been pretty much impossible or to use or unsupported based on the way the game, the uh, VM changed. The second main way is to use networking and this allows you to use Game Maker stuff but it requires you to run two instances of the project, hide one of them and then have the two communicate over packets and buffers and the downside of this is that all of the data that you send and package up has to be converted and packed into a buffer and then if you want to unload it into a different date structure unpacked at the other end and there are lots of impracticalities, it's not necessarily ideal and the data transfer itself can still be quite slow so for smallish tasks that you want constantly firing off this can offset any potential performance gain that you get. So I want to come out and try and solve this problem head on and I think I've worked out how. So uh, I'll first put a disclaimer up by saying that this will only work in YYC, however um, if this does end up working and you do use it, it'll be synonymous between whether you use the regular version of Game Maker or not. So for example, if you run on the VM, it'll just run um, a single threaded version. Uh, so you don't actually have to change any of your code. It'll just create the illusion of, it, of uh, it'll just kind of hide the way the multi-threading and do everything in sequence. Uh, so if you queue up a bunch of tasks, it'll do all those tasks, one, two, three, four, uh, in a row rather than all at the same time. So I'm going to give you a quick run through and show you what's going on. So if I run this, um, as you can see here, we're just calling the normal script execute function on this function test script. And this test script can be whatever the hell we want. And all it's doing is uh, looping to 100,000 and every 10,000 ints, it's putting out a message saying the thread count which is subsequently the argument that we pass in. And if we look at the output, we get 10 zeros followed by 10 ones, followed by 10 twos, followed by 10 threes, which means it's running this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. This is what you'd expect from a single threaded performance. However, if I comment this out and select this multi-threaded version, I've created this function called script execute async. And at the moment, all this does is um, implement increment a global variable and run script execute. But you might be thinking, oh, well, how's this doing anything? But I'll show you the magic later on. Um, but let's start by just running this and seeing where we go. So we run this, and as you can see, all of the numbers are jiggled up. Some of them have even fired off before the main threads even started. Um, and for any of you who've got any amount of experience with multi-threading, you'll know that this sort of message interpolation definitely means that all of these three functions are running in sequence on different cores. Uh, if you want to prove this a little bit more, let's add on two zeros to here, two zeros to here, stop, run it again and open task manager. We should see that the CPU utilization for the executable goes up to uh, okay, game maker. It's not quite enough to fire it off there. Um, right, we're really going to have to nuke it. So, so this should give it a bit of a heavy load, and we should see that my CPU utilization goes up. 
beyond. Uh, so I've got eight threads on my CPU. So yeah, we got the fifty percent game maker hit usage. Whereas if we run this one, we're gonna get limited to what, like sixteen percent ish, or twelve and a half percent maybe. Um, so yeah, fourteen fourteen percent, and it's not going any higher than that because we're using one thread. Um, and that's it. So yeah. Um, similarly, can we get a? Don't think we can get a thread count on this, can we? Maybe. But the end goal is that this function is somehow magically running the code on independent threads. And at the moment, those threads will just carry on and they don't get cleaned up because I've not got very far with this. But we're creating an initial little setup here. But once again, we can see that it peaked at about 40%. And the zero thread was actually the slowest in this case. We can see it's kind of doing a bit of extra at the end. So how is this achieved? This is where we get into the uh, nitty gritty and the dirty stuff. Um, so the first step is a little bit of hackery in the YYC default include file. And this is just a little bit of primer. Um, and what we're setting up here is basically, oh, I'm just going to move these windows so they're a bit more readable. Um, we're basically setting up the infrastructure to allow us to create threads on the fly in GameMaker. This is the GameMaker file that we've been editing and it's calling GML script script execute async. Uh, which is just a function, that's the function we've defined and this is the C++ file that corresponds to what we found and what we're doing here is instead of calling the function as it normally be, basically in GameMaker if you had this normally this function would just be called like this, so we'd have this function followed by these arguments and that would be roughly what the default game maker code looks like. Um, however, because we know that we want to run this on a separate thread, we can cheat this slightly and instead comment that out and replace it with this line of code. And yes, we are editing the C++ here, but the neat thing about this setup is that this file here only needs to be edited once, and we can take it one step further. Um, in a little while and I'll show you how to do this. And the other cool benefit is if we don't edit this file, um, it will just work as normal using the default script execute. So basically what I'm going to end up doing is creating a collection of C++ files that you basically paste over existing C++ files to get this multi-threaded support. It's a little bit hacky, but the only file that you'll need, to, that's all you'd need to do is just say copy five files or however many there are, overwrite them with the existing ones because the names will be the same, it'll all work hunky-dory. Um, and because of the way GameMaker encodes all of its variables, pretty much everything is wrapped up inside this gmlids.h. So um, there's no necessary changes. So no matter what other files change in the project, this file doesn't need to change. Um, and they've done that in, on purpose so that you don't need to recompile every file if you change a different unrelated file. And to go through what this does, so we're basically creating a simple thread pool as it goes. Um, a vector is basically a list in C++. And we've got these workers and we're saying here we want to create a new thread and we want that thread to call this function um, yygml call script function with these arguments and that is just handling all the heavy lifting for us creates a thread, fires it off, all is good and then the result that eventually gets done back in this the one caveat to this is that um, we can't capture results in the conventional way so in this case uh, this result is basically lost um, so what the system that I'm planning on creating will do is use a series of global data structures and it will rely on you um, using functions like the buffer functions or the list functions, I haven't decided which ones are more appropriate yet, to pass arguments and results around. Um, however, the ca caveat being there is if you are modifying globally date created data structures, you don't need to return results per se. So say if you've written a function uh, that modifies a grid. So let's say I 
do grid um, global dot some grid equals ds grid create um, zero uh, let's make it four high four by four and then we go here um, global dot sum grid equal uh, global dot sum grid uh, i comma i equals i uh, that will actually just fill the grid directly um, and we can do that so like say if I was to run this code I'm not going to output it because these threads will carry on running whilst it's printing so it won't actually work um, but to give you an idea uh, that grid eventually once all of these functions are finished will contain the values uh, I guess to give you an example I can uh, Go five uh, twenty times i comma string i some grid i i so if we run this, what should actually happen is this grid should get filled in. Um, oop, what have I missed? Oh yeah. Watch this break in my face. What we should actually have is once these threads all finish, for it to start filling up, hopefully. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, oh, whoops, wrong ones. Arg. Arg. Equals arg. My bad. Uh, I is not the I is the counter variable. So in this case, um, we should see zeros, and then once these fill up, these should progressively change to ones. There we go. See, see, they all suddenly changed. That's an example of how you can modify uh, global data structures. See, we haven't had to change any of that C++ code. I've just written this extra bit of code, and it's just filled in the grids in the back. Um, so we could say, for example, thread plus string i finished, and for example, we could. Uh, lengthen this by making some threads intentionally take longer just to give you an idea again of what could potentially happen Ooh, okay that ended instantly oh duh, again okay. Okay, yeah, see, those progressively filled, and the whole time this thread wasn't blocked because we were able to continue drawing. Um, cool, right? So, yeah, that's an example of what I'm currently working on. Um, I think it's going to be really neat. I think it's going to be a really, really easy way of adding multi threading. Once again, we can go back and turn on single threaded, or interestingly, let's say I'm going to tone down this count, but if we want to run it in the regular Windows VM, uh, it will still run without any modification and it will just happen to be the case that uh, these will run in sequence so again on the VM uh, this will have the behavior that it will block so it's blocking, blocking, done and if we go back to YYC once again where this works uh, we can cheese this in once again And thread two is taking a bit of time. I may have a problem there. But yeah, uh, it does need a bit of work. I've only done whipped this up in the last hour, but I got excited. Wanted to make this video. And uh, yeah, hopefully, this will be something that's kind of neat uh, that people can make use of. Uh, I'm going to leave this video there, but I'm going to continue this discussion on the forums and on my Discord. So if any of you want to get involved, if any of you want to discuss this or theorize about ideas, theorize about ways to organize the system, um, then please do leave a comment. Um, strictly speaking, I will say that this is kind of reserved for advanced use only. You kind of need to know what you're doing. You need to be careful because you can muck things up. And if you do muck things up, for example, the game maker default insert header 
Um, it can cause problems down the line. But my current planned list of features that I want to add are a means of sort of capturing thread index. So the global variable you saw before was intended to be a thread index. Um, the reason it's a global variable there is because if you don't use YYC, it would just be internally managed. If you do use YYC, it'll use these injected data structures instead. And with this, you'll be able to do something like um, I think finished thread uh, index one. Um, if a sync finished, do something, and then a sync join, which is a common again threading thing, which will block the main thread until the thread with the given index has rejoined. So, um, say if you wanted to. wait until all the threads are finished before you carry on, you can do something like this. Um, so you have the benefit of carrying on with performance, So, but you can use this version uh, to, say, update a progress bar um, or something like that. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye.